Now this is what I call a thrift haul. We are gonna go over all of this up close and personal, just like the last video. But check it out, guys. I had a really good day thrifting. Got some really good stuff. I can't wait to show you guys this haul. All right, you guys already know the deal. I am back with a second huge thrift haul, even bigger, actually twice as big as the last video. And you guys seem to like it so much. You left so many positive comments saying that you learned a lot and you really enjoyed that style of video. So I'm going to do it again today. I got almost twice as much stuff. I thought about splitting it up into two videos, but I figured I would just go through things a little quicker today and maybe keep out a couple of the basic stuff or just go through it really quickly. So I'll start with the clothing this time and then go to the shoes. I just had a really good day of sourcing and these kinds of days don't really come that often for me, especially in the area that I live. I live. I usually have much better luck at the flea markets than I do thrifting. So when I get thrift hauls like this, I'm dying to share them with you guys. So let's get into it. First up, we got a vintage like 2001, uh, 2002 St. Louis Cardinals shirt. Nothing crazy here, but these kinds of stuff always sell well for me. Big graphics, sports teams, it's easy money. And this was only $1.99. Next up, I just sold one of these on my eBay store in a different colorway for $39.99 plus shipping. This is a vintage Polo Ralph Lauren sweater vest. And as you can see, this is the vintage tag right here, that long rectangular blue tag. And it's a really good size XXL, 100% cotton. This sells for me really fast. Like I said, the last one sold for 40 bucks plus shipping. So I knew I had to grab this one. Next up is a pair of Nike shorts right here. I might keep these for myself. I bought them because they were cheap, uh, but I like the black and silver colorway right here. This should still sell for an easy $15 to $20, 20 free shipping maybe. Uh, so I decided to pick them up. I'll probably keep them though. Next up, we got a vintage LSU Fighting Tiger shirt right here. This is on a MJ Sophie Made in the USA tag. Anytime I find a sports team that has a Made in the USA tag, it tends to sell a little bit faster for me. So I decided to pick this up. I found these vintage SS Mickey Disney sh uh, swim trunks. Uh, they got like the mesh lining on the inside, which tells me that they are swim trunks on the vintage Mickey Unlimited tag. I love this tag. A couple of my vintage Disney t-shirts are actually from that specific tag and it's made in the USA, size extra large. I should probably get about 30 to 40 bucks for these. Next, I found this at a Goodwill and I didn't even know what it was, but this is why sometimes you just always have to be curious. And I looked this up and truck fit mob to the end, I guess is like a rap group or something to do with Lil Wayne and some of those guys. Again, if you know better than me, let me know in the comment section, but I'm not super familiar with it. But here is the tag. It says truck fit respect, uh, respect few or something like that. I don't know. It's a size large, super clean, no flaws. And there's only one listed in a different color for $200. So I figured I would take my chances on it. This was $11.99 at the thrift store, so not too bad. Here's a bolo for you guys. If you didn't know, paintball jerseys is a great bolo. This is Dye, D-Y-E, and this is one of the most popular brands of paintball guns, at least when I played, like 10 years ago, it was one of the most popular. So I knew I had to have this one, and I've sold these before. Great size, there's the tag on it. And this one actually has like a padded shoulders and elbows. So when people like run and they dive and during the paintball game, uh, it'll kind of protect them a little bit, I guess. But great colorway, no stains, no flaws. I should easily get about 60 bucks for this. Next up is a vintage NASCAR Jeff Gordon front and back shirt. This is really nice. It is vintage and it's front and back. Like I said, it's got a pretty cool graphic, a little bit different on the, on the back than the front too. So it said built to conquer. Built to conquer, it took me a minute to read it, but, and then it says destined to dominate. So that's really cool. This actually sold to someone on Instagram. So if you're watching this at Geek Gangsters, thank you so much for your purchase. I appreciate it. I sold this on Instagram for $45 free shipping. This is just a basic bread and butter item, Nike Therma Fit pants. These are awesome. Anything Nike is really popular right now. I mean, they've always been popular, you guys know, but these are just the black like Thermafit pants. They're warm on the inside, the joggers, the sweatpants. These should easily get me about 30 bucks. This was an item I decided to take a chance on. This is a Ralph Lauren Polo Jeans Co. like cable knit sweater. I usually don't pick 
uh, a Polo Jeans Co. brand too often, except in my last video, I did pick up a pair of pants that were the cargos. So if I find things that are a little bit different from that brand, I will pick them up. And this was a 100% wool, like cable knit sweater. And there's also a little teeny tiny tag down here on the bottom, like another little insignia, I guess. And so this was super clean, great price. It was uh, $5.99, but it was half off at this store and so three bucks i decided to pick this up i'm probably going to list it for around 35 40 bucks this was another item i decided to take a risk on if you're familiar with this tag or this brand then you know surf style is a great vintage brand from the 80s and 90s usually the jackets are iridescent and purple and green and they say surf style all over them this one is blank so i'm taking a little bit of a chance on it i think it was like three bucks at this thrift store but for being blank and having nothing on it it probably won't sell for as much or as quickly as the surf styles with the big prints, but I'll pop up a little comp on the screen so you can see that it usually says surf style like right in the middle and they can go for like 40 to 50 bucks. I'm thinking I could probably get around 30 to 35 for this one. Next up, one of my favorite pulls to be honest is this vintage polo sport plaid uh, like button up type shirt. Usually you don't see Polo Sport written on the shirt and that's one of the reasons why I really like this. If you're familiar with Ralph Lauren, Polo Sport, Polo Jeans Co, you know, all the different subcategories of Polo Ralph Lauren, the Polo Sport brand is a little bit harder to find and it's especially harder to find uh, shirts and pants and jackets with the spell outs on them. Usually you will see the tag uh, and this is an OG tag right here, Polo Sport. This item is faked a lot, so you do have to be careful for that. But just a beautiful colorway right here. And this was, I think, like 4 or $5. So this was a great pickup for me. I'm going to probably list this really high in the $60 to $80 range. Next up, this is a little Quicksilver uh, boarding shirt right here. And the only reason I picked this up is because this is the OG Quicksilver tag made in the USA. You don't really see those very often. And this is a smaller size. I believe it was tagged a medium, uh, but it shrunk a little bit. I think I could probably pull like 30 bucks out of this shirt just because of the tag made in the USA. And uh, the true surfers and skaters who, re who rely, not rely, who like Quicksilver will like this shirt. I got a simple little Florida Gators shirt right here with a nice big spell out. And the gator on the bottom, I thought that gator on the bottom kind of was the icing on the cake for this graphic. University of Florida stuff, I mean, I live in Orlando. Gator stuff usually pops up a lot. So I decided to pick up this shirt. It was a tag to large and just nice colorway, no flaws. Again, I just am finding stuff that's ready to list, doesn't need any work or anything like that. And uh, this was one of those for $1.99. This was an interesting piece. I'm not too familiar with this. This was a Disney's Resort. Uh, tag right here resort wear. I'm assuming someone who worked at like the Polynesian or the contemporary or the Swan and Dolphin was like an employee wearing this shirt at some point for one of those hotels or something and uh, this was at the thrift store super cheap. I decided to pick it up and it has nothing on it but these color blocking stripes are really cool really bright. This will be a great piece for spring for somebody and the fact that it's on a Disney tag should make it stand out a little bit more. I'll probably list this for somewhere between 30 and 40 bucks. This is a complete shot in the dark. I have no idea why I bought this other than the fact that it was only two bucks. I just thought the graphic was really cool. It's on a vintage uh, Hanes beefy tag right here, adult XL, made in the USA. So great tag, great size made in the USA, super cool colors, and it just says Celtic Cat on it. So if you know anything about this, let me know in the comment section, but I just thought it was a really cool shirt. This is probably something that will end up selling on like Poshmark or Depop when somebody's just searching like random cat shirts or something, but I thought it was super cool and I had to have it. I learned this brand from Anfisa Far North Thrift or Far North Home. Now she's got two pages. Uh, she's doing great on TikTok and YouTube. If you don't know, she does like an off-grid living YouTube channel where she talks about uh, how she lives in Alaska off grid uh, with her husband and kids. It's really cool. You should go check out her channel. I learned this brand from her. It's a women's brand called Cabby or Cobby. Uh, I don't really pick up a lot of women's clothes, but this was in good condition. It was lightweight and I just, I thought that I'd give it a chance. I've sold a couple of these uh, pieces from this brand before and it just was really soft, felt nice and I decided to take a chance on it. So we'll see what happens. I paid $4 for that. This was a new with tags PGA Tour brand women's golf shorts. And here is the tag women's size 16. So um, I'm not really sure like uh, how sizes work with women's clothing, especially with shorts in the sporting uh, department. But 
Um, I hope that doesn't affect it too much. If you know about that, let me know. But they were new with tags. They were only five bucks, so I decided to pick them up. PGA Tour, when I scanned the barcode on the uh, tag right here, this was a really cool find. This is a uh, vintage Gander Mountain fishing, bird hunting, hiking, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, hunting vest. And it's got a little Miller Life, Miller High Life uh, embroidery on the bottom. This is like super thick, super heavy. I paid up for this. I paid 10 bucks for it, but I thought it was super cool. And there's the Gander Mountain tag. Uh, anything Gander Mountain usually does sell pretty well for me. And this being like a thick, really nice quality vest, I decided to pick it up. The buttons are really nice. There's tons of pockets. So someone who's hunting or fishing should get really good use out of this. And it's a great size XL. So if it was a size small for 10 bucks, I probably would have passed, but I'm thinking I could probably get 30 to 40 bucks for this. Maybe not, maybe 25 to 30, but I'm gonna list it high since it's got the Miller Lite uh, High Life patch on it, I don't know. Another hunting piece that I picked up was this Winchester uh, fleece pullover quarter zip. Oh, actually this is a full zip, I'm sorry. Uh, but again, a reason I picked this up is because the embroidery was on the jacket. You usually don't see that from brands like this that often. And so this said Winchester Sportsman on it. Hopefully you can see that tag. This was $7.99, so I decided to take a chance on it. I'm going to list it for about 40 bucks, but it does have the, uh, I believe, mossy oak on it or something like that. Uh, maybe not. But anyway, I looked when I looked up comps, they were looking pretty good, so I decided to pick it up. I picked up this men's L.L. Bean Packable Hood Windbreaker. You guys have heard me talk about L.L. Bean multiple times before, and this was like a lightweight uh, rain jacket, I guess. I'm not sure, but it's got a packable hood in it, and anything L.L. Bean is flying off the shelves for me. This could be potentially like 40 bucks. One of my favorite finds of the day, uh, as far as like vintage pieces is concerned, is this Re Re Reebok Windbreaker. And I just love the sleeves on it. Look at this thing, man. These colors just go crazy. This is so hard, as the vintage kids say. And it's like that anorak pullover, half zip. You got the little Reebok uh, logo embroidered in pink right on the front and center. And here is the old Reebok tag. Let me move the price. Here is the old Reebok tag right there. Super dope. And this one was made in uh, Thailand, but uh, just because it's not made in the USA doesn't mean it's not vintage. You gotta know and learn your tags. And I spent a lot of time learning them, uh, but just a great pickup. I love this piece. I'm probably gonna list it for like 40 to 50 bucks and see, take offers. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you saw the whole post, but I shared this on my story. One of the better pieces of the day as well. This insane, huge spell out Florida Gators jacket right here. Big, big, big Gator on the front with University of Florida. And then you got Gators embroidered. The embroidery is so clean and crispy. And then you've got uh, a little bit of a Gator on the front too that says Florida. The colors are just beautiful on this thing. It's like a snap jacket on a number one apparel brand, size XL. I'm listing this baby for about $150, so we'll see. This and the next couple items was at a secret spot that I can't tell you about. Uh, it wasn't exactly a thrift store, so I did pay up for this. I paid 30 bucks for it, but I think I can easily get over 100, but I'm shooting for the 150 range. Next item from my secret spot is this vintage FAMU Rattlers Satin Bomber Jacket. Uh, you usually don't find a lot of FAMU stuff up here, and so to find that with the embroidered Rattler snake on it, with the neck is just really cool on this vintage rider tag made in the USA. Unfortunately, it's not chalk line or anything like that, but um, I, I guess this isn't considered satin, but it's like that bomber style. And so I think I can probably get in the upwards of 60 to $90 for this. It was really hard to find any comps on it. So I'm gonna list it really high and see what happens. As I'm recording this video, the 49ers are still in the playoffs. They're on the hunt to the Super Bowl. And so I thought that this was a really good pickup. I paid $20 for this one, and it is a 50th anniversary uh, patch of the San Francisco 49ers windbreaker pullover right here on the NFL Pro Line authentic tag. And then you got the spell out on the back. You got the 49ers logo on the sleeve. You got the NFL logo on this sleeve. It's got everything you want. And then it's got like the, like the sweatshirt lining on the inside to help keep you warm. It's got the pockets. I think this is a $50 jacket all day. There are only about two or three listed and two or three sold. 
and most of them are around $50 to $60 on a best offer accepted. So if the 49ers make it to the next playoffs, and I list this basically today or tomorrow, I should be able to sell it pretty quickly in that $50 to $60 range. I got a Columbia jacket with a uh, reversible, or not reversible, with a packable hood in it. I don't know if this is like a rain jacket or a ski jacket. Uh, it's like that anorak style again, half zip, pullover. It doesn't zip down all the way. You got the Columbia Sportswear Company on there, and it's just a really nice red. Lots of pockets. I love the little snaps on the front. These types of designs where they're just a little bit different than your typical full zip jacket tend to pop out in listings. They stand out a little bit. When I was doing research on this jacket, I was finding comps in the like $50 to $79 range, and I didn't see a single one in this red and black colorway. So I'll probably list around 60 bucks and see what happens. I got this really cool puffer vest. I'm not like huge on uh, brands for puffer vests because there's so many of them. This one is called Charles Daily Collection, um, but this was a full zip with a snap. And I love picking these puffer vests up, especially these like crazy colorways. It's like a green corduroy with like a brown soft top. I don't know how to explain it. These things always sell well for me in like the 30 to $40 range, especially on Depop. I just sold one actually yesterday for 30 bucks on Depop, just a regular, no branded puffer jacket uh, vest. And so if you see puffer vests, that style is in right now. So be sure to be on the lookout for them. If they're cheap enough, scoop them up. I found this Gap hoodie camouflage, nothing crazy here, probably a $30 piece, but I thought that with like Kanye West and everything pushing the Gap brand a little bit, this would be an easy seller. So the camouflage is nice because it's different than your typical just like black or white hoodie. So I decided to grab this and see what happens. This is a vintage Spalding uh, like basketball sports brand from the 90s. There's a little Spalding Pro spell out on the sleeve right here, but just again, another really sick color block windbreaker. I love selling color block windbreakers. It's just like, I know that they don't sell for like hundreds of dollars, but I feel like for like a four or three, four or $5 pickup, these are $30 jackets all day. I'm actually gonna list this one a little higher because I think the colorway is super cool and uh, it's super clean, no flaws. I'll probably list this around like 40 bucks. Because this Atlanta Braves uh, NF or MLB Authentic Diamond Collection jacket. I've already had multiple people ask me about this on Instagram and I'm probably gonna sell it for around 100 to $150. There are comps at 150 sold and 159 best offer accepted. So I definitely think that once I get it cleaned up, there's a little bit of like uh, fading on it or staining. I don't know, I have to wash it, but this should clean up really well. You got the little MLB logo on the back. This I was another jacket I paid $30 for, but again, I'm thinking I can get over 100 for this. So just a beautiful Atlanta Braves jacket. I love finding pieces like this. This is a really cool find. I've never seen this uh, or found this logo before and it is Polo Pure Cashmere. I know that this is another one of like the Polo Ralph Lauren side tags. Uh, I don't know if it's real or fake. The stitching is not 100% uh, straight, I guess you could say. Well, maybe it is, I don't know. You guys can decide. Let me know in the comments section if you know anything about this, if it's real or fake. But it was 100% cashmere, it's super soft, great size, XL, and uh, it had the little Polo, keep slipping. Had the little polo embroidered insignia right there on the front v-neck sweater. And this is an all day pickup for me. If it's real at cashmere, I'm thinking this is probably like a $60 piece or so. I'm going to go over these next couple of brands really quick because it's all pants. And if you guys don't know pants, then uh, this will hopefully help you. I got some Columbia Omni Shade pants, just some lightweight uh, cargo pants. These are easily 30 bucks in my store. This is a new to me brand, a great bolo for you guys to learn, Paco pants. These are uh, vintage apparently, and the, this is the logo as well. You can see these are like cargo pants as well with big pockets on the sides and on the back. Great for hiking or you know being outside, uh, disc golfers even, that kind of stuff. I don't know, but the comps were great, around 70 to 80 bucks. Next up is a brand everybody should know at this point, Cool. K-U-H-L, it's a great brand to sell. These are the Stealth Zippy Pants, and they actually zip right here halfway down the leg, and you can turn them into shorts during the summer seasons or the warm seasons. Again, just really cool, great, lots of zippy pockets on it. All the stuff is logoed with the cool brand, cool on the back pocket. I just sold a pair of these for like 40 bucks, and they had like a rip on the back pocket, so. Uh, cool is a great brand. They sell high. It's kind of like Lululemon in my opinion. It's just one of those great brands that a lot of people really want 
and or Patagonia, I should say, and they sell for a lot of money. A pretty easy to recognize brand right here, Cargo, or Cargo, Carhartt Cargo Pants. These are like the carpenter style. They've got the little, you know, pull tags where you can hang your hammer or, or working pants. These, I've already sold the ones that I picked up in North Carolina, if you guys saw those, and I sold them for like 35 bucks almost instantly. So in a day or two, these should sell really fast. Great colorway, no flaws. Probably again, another 35 to 40 bucks. I picked up a really cool pair of Harley Davidson, like motorcycle riding pants. I don't know if these, these are double knees. So, but it goes all the way from like the bottom right here, all the way up here to like mid leg. I'm not sure what this model is called, but they were cheap enough. They were $9.99 half off. And so I decided to pick these up. Great brand, Harley Davidson. Obviously you guys should know that these, this is the tag on these pants, but these should sell. My guess is probably around the 40 to $50 range. Last but not least for the pants, I got a pair of vintage orange tab men's Levi's 505s. And these are made in the USA. Again, the way to recognize vintage Levi's stuff, which I talked about in my last video that I'm not picking up as much Levi's as I used to is the inside tag should be like a white pull tag like this. And you'll see it say made in the USA on it right there that this one does say that and it's faded. But if you ever see the orange tab on the Levi's jeans, that's something to be on the lookout for as well. That's usually one way to distinguish vintage jeans is the orange tab is really popular. These should sell for probably 50 to 60 bucks. I actually missed a couple clothing pieces. They fell off of my pile here. So I'm going to go to them real quick. This was a women's Harley Davidson piece. You can see the HD embroidered right there. And then here is the Harley logo. Nice women's uh, jacket right here. Zip up with the logo on the back. I thought this like purple and black cheetah style print was just really cool. And it was a great price. It was like five bucks. So I picked it up. And then I picked up a second Harley Davidson piece at the same store. So my guess is that the same person donated both of these. This is a beautiful piece. And my buddy, Bob Dabra, shout out, Bob, if you're watching this, he literally sent me a message on Instagram that he sold this exact same jacket for 30 plus shipping. So maybe I'll try to beat his comp and sell for like 35. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but it's a great jacket and it's got the huge logo on the front and the back full zip should sell pretty fast. I found a pair of women's golf shorts, new tags, and I also found a pair of men's golf shorts, new tags. These are Nike dry fit uh, golf shorts, or I call them golf shorts, but they're just the standard fit golf short, but brand new tags. Never been worn, got the Nike logo on the back. These are size 30 medium. They should sell really fast. And finally, I love taking chances on vintage crew neck sweatshirts from colleges, especially smaller colleges that are not that well known. So this is, I don't even know how to pronounce this, Treveca uh, Nazarene University. And you can see like the cross and the little globe and the Bible right here. Usually vintage Christian college crew necks sell really well for me because they're hard to come by. And the people that go to those colleges, they, they like to find vintage stuff, I guess. I don't know. Or it's just, like I said, hard to come by on the gear tag. Uh, pretty cool. This one will need to be washed a little bit. It's pretty faded, but I thought it was cool. And sometimes these sell for like 40 to 50 bucks because they're again, really hard to come by. If you ever find vintage Christian colleges specifically, I would always pick them up, especially if they have the nice graphics like that. They do sell well for me. Moving on to shoes. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. If you are hit the thumbs up button and make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to always teach and educate and give you guys actual information that you can benefit from as you're watching these haul videos. So you're not just seeing stuff I'm picking up, but you know why I'm picking it up. I got these Adidas high top shoes right here. These are the Neo labels. There's only like one listed. And so I'm thinking these are probably like a 40 to $50 shoe. Speed round, lightning round for shoes. We're gonna go through these super quick. I got some tie-dye Converse right here. You, If you know, you know Converse sell well. I got some really good condition Hey Dudes. Whoop, these are lightweight. These will go first class, which is one of the reasons why I love them. If you don't pick up Hey Dudes, make sure you're looking for them. They are a slip-on type shoe and they sell really fast. They've got a cult following and uh, they're, they sell for probably like 40, 50 bucks. A nice clean pair of Nike Metcons. These should sell really fast as well. Crossfitters love the Metcons, so these should sell pretty fast. Doubled up on the Metcons. These are Nike Metcon 4s. These ones need a little bit of cleaning, but they still have plenty of tread on the bottom. A bigger shoe size. I think they're a 13 or a 14, but really nice graphic on them, and these uh, do well for me all the time. Just like my last video, if you're sleeping on Heelys, wake up because Heelys sell well. These are like a men's size seven or eight. So they may take a little bit longer to sell. 
uh, but I can also sell them as a women's size. Uh, but the green is not as popular as the black or the gray, but I still love picking up Heelys at the right price. Anything under 10 bucks is usually an all day cop for me. I'm picking up more bread and butter stuff like this, even though I used to not. These are literally brand new Crocs purple. The crazy colors seem to be really popular. I see a lot of people wearing like the banana yellow and the pinks and stuff. So I picked these up. They're like a junior size, a junior size two, uh, but they should still sell pretty well for somewhere around like 20, 25 bucks free shipping. They'll go first class. One of the best brands to sell. I picked these up even though they didn't have any insoles. Hoka One One Clifton Sixes. I can't stop talking about Hoka's in my videos. They are worn, again, no insoles, but these were eight bucks and these should still sell for anywhere from 40 to $50 in my store. Uh, you guys may underestimate the power of Hoka, but people love having these for backups, like for one race or something where they don't want to ruin their really nice Hoka's, they'll buy a backup pair like this that they can throw away after a race. And instead of spending $160, on a pair of brand new ones, they'll buy a pair of used ones like this in the same colorway and size that they are and they will sell fast, I guarantee it. I got a super clean pair of silver Nike Hirachis. This is another great brand to sell. I just sold a pair of these on Mercari in black for 50 bucks and they were super beat. So I think I could probably get about 50 to 60 bucks for these. Should make some good money. I only picked these up because I thought the colorway was really, really good and they had extremely good tread on them. These are the Mizuno Wave Catalysts. These do, these are kind of like the Brooks launch model. They're like the bottom spectrum of the Mizuno models, uh, but they still sell good. I should probably still be able to pull like 30 to 35 bucks out of these. I think this is my favorite pair of the day as far as shoes are concerned. I've talked about this brand multiple times on my channel and I love selling Nike Free Run Fly Knits. If you are not picking up Nike Free Run Fly Knits, I shared this in my last video. I had a pair of free 4.0 Fly Knits. These are just the free fly knits, but the colorway is like that gray charcoal rainbow colorway with the black bottoms. These are in beautiful condition. I paid up for these at $20, but I think I can easily get 60 to 80 bucks for them and they'll sell super fast. Men's size 10, great size. No tread wear really whatsoever on them to be honest. I mean, a little bit, but, but barely. These should sell really fast. I got some kids Jordan Retro Olympics. Uh, anything Jordan in kid size usually sells pretty fast for me because parents like to have their kids match their shoes. They're in really good shape. They just need a little bit of a magic eraser wipe down and I should be able to probably sell these based on comps for around 50 to $60 for kids shoes, guys. Don't sleep in the kids department if you are not looking in that section and you like selling shoes. Also, little secret which I've shared before too, once upon a child, or resale stores for kids clothing, you can usually find some gems in there pretty cheap. I found a beautiful pair of Merrill Appalachian Trail hiking shoes with the Vibram soles. Again, no cleaning or wiping down really required on these. And this was a great pickup at $7.99. I should sell these for probably between $50 to $70, maybe more. I got some Batman and Joker Converse All-Stars right here. I didn't even have to look up comps on these because I know that the Batman DC stuff sells really well. I believe these were made in like 2012, but they've got like that really cool Batman laces on them. You got Joker on one side and or Bat Joker on this side, Batman on the other side, and just a really cool pair of shoes. These are a really good size too, so they should sell pretty quickly after I clean them up. I got two pairs of women's night or Adidas NMDs, I should say. NMDs are a great model of shoes to sell, especially when you can find them in good condition. It's a really popular brand and model right now, similar to the Ultra Boosts, if you didn't know, uh, but the NMDs, they're in great condition. They need basically no cleaning. I just got to put shoe trees in them and list. Great colorways. You got like that ice blue colorway and that rose pink colorway. Both of these should pull me 50 to 60 bucks each, a minimum. I believe when I looked up the rose ones, there was only one listed for 200 bucks and it was coming from Japan. So used condition, I should easily get 50 to 60, probably more. Dealing with Dalton put me on the Crocs a lot. And so for $5, I decided to pick up these Crocs like wedge heels or whatever. They're in like brand new condition. Again, they look like they've never been worn. These should sell for probably like 30 bucks if I'm not mistaken. In this condition, maybe more. I'm pretty sure these are literally brand new. Got a pair of really nice Vans high top uh, skate shoes. These are in really good condition as well. They got the black bottoms instead of the, the gray gum bottoms or whatever brown gum bottoms and they are a Scotchgard 3M protected model. So I thought that was pretty cool. There's like a little bit of a camouflage on the top. 
Some of these vans can sell in the upwards of $50 to $80. I didn't even look these up because I knew they were worth it at $8.99. This is an all-day pickup for me. Last but not least, guys, thank you so much for sticking around for this video. I hope that you're enjoying it. I hope that you're learning something. These Nike Prestos right here, these are probably the best find of the day as far as shoes are concerned. There are recent solds around the $100 mark, and uh, this bright neon orange colorway is really nice. There's no rips or tears. They're a good size. I believe they're a men's 8.5 or a 9, and uh, Prestos are a great model, but they are highly faked again. And so if you are not familiar with them, you make sure you look up the tag number. If you're not familiar with Nike at all, always go inside the shoe. Find the tag number, look up the model, and do your research. Prestos are faked a lot, and so you have to know what's real and what's fake. You don't want to get uh, screwed like what happened to me with the pair of Solomons. If you don't follow me on Instagram, that video will be coming out relatively soon about how I, got, uh, I sold a pair of fake Solomons on Poshmark, and I didn't even know it. So... Anyway, be on the lookout for Prestos and all these other brands that I found today. I only spent like a couple hundred bucks on everything. I forgot to do the breakdown for the receipts, but it really wasn't that much all in all for everything that I got. And I really enjoyed thrifting this haul. I hope you guys did. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I found and I hope you learned something as always. That's the goals for all of my videos. Let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite find was of mine from this haul. And if you are enjoying these, continue to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for me and leave comments and I will make these videos. I personally think they're a little more interesting than going inside the thrift store because again, you guys get to see up close in person what I'm picking up and why I'm picking it up and you can learn something from it. Uh, I'm going for a little more educational versus entertainment on these style videos, so hopefully they help you out. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace, money!